The snap, the hold, Pinto kicks it away. Low line drive is good with plenty of distance and the Rams take the lead here on a 37 yard. You've seen different teams throughout the years have. You see Paulsboro, West Deptford always seems to have a good kicker. Haddonfield and there you see Overbrook. You know, that's one where if Sterling was able to stop them, you talk about grabbing the momentum and taking it back on your... Martin, again in the shotgun, standing at midfield. Going to hand it off to DeShields. DeShields with some room, spins around him at the 40. He's got daylight. Look at the speed by DeShields across the 20, the 10, looking for the end zone. Is he in? He's in. A 46-yard touchdown run by Marquise DeShields after the burst, and Overbrook leads 9-0. Well, this is a formation that's really predicated upon spreading things out, having a wide open field, and Sterling really uh, got hurt by the deception back there with the, uh, the misdirection. And DeShields is a kid, again, who you don't want to give even just a little bit of space to, or you'll see happen what happened right there. Now, 58 remaining here in the first quarter, Overbrook out to a 10-0 lead. Yeah, you saw like, looked like defensively, they just went one way thinking that Overbrook was going to go to that strong side, but... Hutchinson trying to hop over the pile for the touchdown, and he's in! Tamir Hutchinson scores Sterling's first touchdown of the 2016 season. A one-yard touchdown run makes it 10-6. The snap, and they're going to fake it. And Barrett's going to run it in for the two-point conversion. There's something you don't see every day. Two-point conversion's good, and it's now 10-8. Well, that's what happens when you have your holder, who's also the quarterback, who's also a very instinctive player. I wonder if, we'll take another look at it here, watch the snap. I don't know that that was a design. It looked like it, well, it looked like it was a bobble a little bit. And, you know, sometimes if you have somebody who's holding, who doesn't have his ability to run or think quickly like that, like he does on the field, you know, you just hesitate one split second, you're not going to win the race to the outside. Either tipped. But either way, and now a huge run. That's the Shields. Nothing but daylight. He's got one man to beat, and they're not going to get there. That is a 55-yard touchdown run by Marquise the Shields. That's his second of the night. That puts him well over 100 yards. And Overbrook pads their lead at 16-8. And if you get such good penetration like they got in the backfield right there, had a few guys in there, and you miss... You're going to get what you got right there with the shields going off to the right side. Nobody was there, and when it's a foot race, so and, uh, just like that, they're up 16-8. Speaking of scoring, Haddonfield's Gil Martin runs three yards for his second TD of the night. The Bulldogs lead Collingswood 21 nothing with 3:40 left in the half. A bit, although down for Haddonfield is about like a Haddonfield or West Depp for down to them isn't down to everybody else. But uh, but it, I mean, really, the shocker is. We were told the Kongs would have a lot of people coming back and uh, we're really a, a highly thought of team coming into the season. That game at Haddonfield tonight, not that it matters because the two schools separated by about two miles. Yeah. Look at the explosion there from the Shields once he turned the corner. Second down and six. Barrett. Being flushed out to the left again. He's going to keep it himself. He's got a little bit of room. Cuts it inside and tackled from behind for the touchdown. He got into the end zone for the touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run by C.J. Barrett. And Sterling cuts it to a three-point deficit. Well, when he knows to square those shoulders up, when he decides to get it upfield, you see right here, squares it up, finds that little seat. Excuse me, 17-15. 17-15 game. Forgot about the two-point conversion earlier. 17-15 with 13 seconds left to go here in the first half. But uh, what a huge score there. And you could see the emotion from C.J. Barry. Yeah. They needed that. And, Rob, you look at him, go to the outside right here. Show and pass, show and pass. Again, I, I can't help but look at that and know that the longer he does that, like he does that right there, it freezes the defensive backs on the receivers. And that's a couple less run stoppers coming up. And just, just a great play there by C.J. Barrick on the outside. Rob, look at this. As we look at C.J. Barrick on the outside for a touchdown right there, uh, Sterling's dominated the second quarter. Lutz on to attempt a 22-yard field goal to take the lead. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. And the kick 
Spinning over the left upright is good. Sterling takes a one point lead, their first in the season, with 4.57 remaining, a 22 yard field goal by Christian Lutz. Third and three. That's Barrett back to pass. Has a man complete. And making the catch is Chris Rowe. Chris Rowe into the end zone for the touchdown. A 38 yard touchdown pass from Barrett to Rowe. And Sterling extends the lead. Now there's the case where you've got a high school receiver who can adjust, cut back, make a and, you know, you saw that Overbrook team come up, make a couple stops right there, but this is what you get from a Sterling team that has the ability to open up, and you don't have to go 50 yards downfield. You go a little bit downfield off a team that's really creeping up on the line of scrimmage. You're able to get that, that opening right there, and you've got a game breaker, a kid with the athletic ability that Chris Rowe has, and you're able to come up with a huge play right there to go ahead 24 to 17. I mean, great adjustment by him turning around to make that catch and then just cutting, yeah. finding the hole and getting there. And you, you said it, Kylie, the adjustment of the ball in stride, and that's something you don't see from a lot of high school receivers. They'll just run the pattern, let the ball go where it, it, it may. But with Chris Rowe, you know, you could have a situation where he's covered. If he adjusts, it throws off the defensive back, and he was open on that one. And uh, and what a knack for knowing where he is, where the defenders are. Yeah, he made it look easy. Just knowing where to go, you know. Have Let's see if we can find it here. 54, I think. If it's 54, that's Cody Chapman, the sophomore. And don't underestimate the actual catch. That's a tough catch. The ball low, that's tough, but you got a basketball player right there, Chris Rose, so he's got the good hands there to make that happen. Athleticism. Trying to, trying to find where the head is. Good, good eyes on you. All right, you're hired. <laughs> Forget that old basketball thing. You're going to stick with broadcasting. Yeah, and, and they're, they've been defensively getting to, as we look at the... Barrett going to roll here. out, trying to convert. Trying to get to the corner, he dives for the pylon. Is he in? No. Good effort by C.J. Barrett, but he was just a little shy of the goal line. The official was right there on it, but in the air, one on the ground. And he's given Sterling a seven point lead with 82 seconds remaining. Was close. I guess it depends on where his knee is. The official was right there on it. I think that's what, you, you know, he had to be looking at. The knee went down before the ball hit. Oh, wow. Wow. But maybe he was shy of the, I don't know, he hit the pylon, and that's what, yeah. usually when the pylon is knocked over, that means that it's a, as long as you break the plane of that goal line, we'll slow it down here. Missed tackle there. He almost hyperextended his knee there. Wow. I, I don't know. And you know what I, I think, think that in. I think that <laughs> was that was probably a case of you see him go down that low, you're making the call, you're almost assuming the knee's down. Right. And in most cases, you're down that low it is, but like Tab is saying in the truck, he's still his knee, as low as he was on in the front part, no challenge flags was no. still up. Oh yeah, that was close. I yeah. think I think he's in. Yeah, the nose of the ball looked like it got it, it hit that. And again, it just has the nose just has to hit the line. Doesn't have to go past it. That was a great effort. Complete extension here. Yeah. That's a great look yeah. at, at that in the truck, guys, and that from that angle. I really I mean, think he's the in. official just assumed the knee was down. Yeah. Fourth and goal. From the four for the Rams. Martin takes a handoff to the Shields, takes it himself, calls his own number, and stretches for the end zone, and he's in. A four yard touchdown run by Xavier Martin brings the Rams to within one with 9.48 remaining, very reminiscent of the C.J. Barrett stretch. Well, what a great, this, this was just, an incredible individual effort right here. I mean, they had him down, spun around. You talk about, you know, you tell backs, you tell anybody when they get in a situation where you go 
uh, one on one or one on two or three with defenders. Keep the legs moving. And boy, he did just that, spinning around. And now we're looking at this replay. Misses the extra point, and Overbrook still trails this by one. Big break, but we're gonna look at this replay. Wow. He looked like it was. So a big fourth down here for Sterling. Barrett back to pass, going out to his right. He's got plenty of room on that far side. He can keep it himself. He has a first down, makes a man miss into the end zone. No signal and just shy again. Wow. Barrett looking for th his third touchdown of the night, inches shy, but he had all sorts of room on that right side. Yeah, and a great job, you know, on that boot right there. Awesome job offensively up front, sealing things off, and uh, C.J. Barrett made the decision early on that he was going on a run with that one, really got upfield and, you know, close to getting in there, came up a little bit short, but the big thing is obviously getting that first down. Official timeout. They're gonna say timeout Sterling. I don't know why you take a timeout here with 6.04 remaining. Well, I... Did he fumble it out of the end zone? Overbrook's defense is coming off the field. Well, if you fumbled out of the end zone, that's a it's touchback. Overbrook's ball. Wow, that's a... I didn't even see the ball come out. Barrett cuts in here, and you see the hit from the Shields right here. And the ball did come out. And the Rams somehow wow. hanging on in this game by the skin of their teeth. Nice move by Barrett to cut it inside, but the hit by the Shields jars the ball loose. But the, the question is, did he cross the Was plane the of the goal, yeah, goal I mean, line before he lost control? From it, here's a better angle. Here comes Barrett on the left, sand, left hand part of your screen here, hit by the Shields as he cuts it in. There's the cut in, and then you can see number two for Overbrook gives him a and as he extends, wow. he's over the pylon. Yeah, it looked like it. He's over, that's a touchdown. Watch the extension here by C.J. Barrett. As he gets hit, has control, has control, and then, I, I don't, that's a touchdown, yeah. Kevin. After the penalty. And the ball comes out. Sterling falls on top of it. Demir Robertson falls on top of it. And Sterling recovers. Turnabout is fair play for Sterling. And they have an opportunity here to close this one out. Now this is the big break they needed here. And it looked like, I don't know if the second man in hit the ball. But Fourth and goal, Barrett. Back to pass, being pressured, being pressured more. Throws it up into the end zone, he's got a man complete, in the end zone, touchdown, incomplete. They're saying he's out of the back of the end zone. Chris Rowe is incensed right now. Well, we'll get a look at it right here. I mean, here we're just looking for one foot. Then obviously you had the catch, and one foot in the end zone. He's drifting backwards, drifting backwards. And it, it's hard to, yeah, he's out. Yeah. Take another, this might be the best look at it here, right in your living room. If we can see where the, here it is, right on the left-hand side here, here he comes. And the question is, he only needs one foot in. So if he got that right foot, in before the left foot went down. Chris Rowe could have went from goat to hero right there. Ooh, wow. You Yikes. know what? And, and I think, you know, you get the toe in. If the toe hits inside first of that right foot.
It's, mm. see, it's hard to tell because of the angle that we're at here as we're back to live action. And Overbrook ripping off a huge run as the Shields trying to score his third touchdown of the night. Going for the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. 80 yards for Marquise the Shields for his third touchdown of the night. What an incredible <laughs> turn of events. You give this offense and Marquise the Shields more than from the shotgun, Martin gonna keep it himself and he is into the end zone for the two point conversion. What a, an absolutely incredible opening night here. Back and forth we go and the Rams leading this one 31-24 with 2.28 remaining. Sterling with all, uh, they have two timeouts remaining by the way. There you see that great cutback ability and that's been a key component of a lot of his runs, a lot of his long runs and kid who just has a sense of where to go on the field and just shows that great speed, great quickness, and then once he got ahead of the pack, it was pretty uh, apparent nobody was going to catch him. If nothing else, it's been an entertaining football. We've had a little bit of everything here tonight. No timeouts for Sterling. 53 seconds remaining. Barrett, hands off to Hutchinson. Hutchinson, touchdown! Five yard touchdown run by Demir Hutchinson. His second of the night. And Sterling is an extra point away from tying this. Now, Demir Hutchinson is exhausted. Now do you go for two? Just an outstanding nope. run here by Hutchins. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. The kick hits the left upright and bounces in. Piece of cake. Are you no kidding drama. me? Just the way this game's been going. You, you get your game tying extra point, getting the post, and going in. Right? This is unbelievable. No We have seen everything here tonight. And this is, Strong's been more consistent. Overbrook's the team as we look at the extra point right here. Off the left upright, and usually that either kicks down and out, but it just, I mean, that thing is still moving. moving. Under 30 now, Martin calls for it. Looking left, throwing left, has a man complete. One-handed grab by Damon Matthews, and he goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Unbelievable effort by Matthews, and the Sterling sideline is stunned. Jubilation on the Rams sideline. One of the most unbelievable catches I think I've seen in, in an unbelievable game. This is an incredible catch, and obviously your all eyes are on the shields just to go up after that ball with one hand, turn around, wow, what a play. What an incredible play. Wow. This is highlight reel material right here. A one-handed stab by Matthews, and he takes it 65 yards. Damon Matthews. With this one-handed catch, look at this. That is just an unbelievable effort. Incredible. I mean, and, and you look at that from a defensive standpoint, you're behind the receiver like you're taught to do in this situation. But for him to spin around, make the catch, change directions, just and that's one of the most unbelievable catches and plays I think I've seen in, uh, I don't know, Tad, how many high school games have we done over the last 25 years, 100? That's Rob Wilsey, the sophomore, was the closest Sterling player to Matthews. And that was just, I mean, you, you can't discredit Wilsey on that, no, but that's just a great just individual. Play. That's you, a, you watch this, 
You're, uh, let's see if we can get to the camera. That's an you're Odell. behind a defender. Odell Beckham-like. And for somebody to make that catch in the air, spin around, go the other way, that's just, just unbelievable. Because you think about it, if the ball was thrown to where it should have been thrown, he probably would have had a chance to break up the play. Yeah. But just an incredible job of adjusting. You give Matthews just 100% credit here on this play. And a nice, effort. not to mention a really, really nice throw by Xavier Martin. Still time. But not looking good for the Silver Knights here in a really bizarre game, 38-31 Overbrook. 